Welcome, investigator. Evil is on the rise. Crime is escalating. Our mission is to eliminate the crime by exposing evil, examine why it manifests, and highlight the brave souls that confront it every day. Join us as we work together to bring justice to every victim. Welcome to All Things Crime. Here's your host, Jared Bradley. Matter of fact, I was going through it in that moment as I was in financial services because it was my first year. And I was, I, again, even though I was employed, even though I was working, I was still sinking. And I remember what that felt like. That financial, you know, you're sinking financially. You know, it, it's not a good feeling. And, you know, all those those thoughts you're having, do I need to sell my house? What do I got to do? Like, you know, you're just, you're worried. Yeah. You're, you're concerned. Yeah. And anyway, so I walk in this group and I see this, these folks that are dealing with the same issues. And I'm like, I can help these people. Not only can I help them financially, like, because there's all these, all this financial impact that happens when you're in career transition. So not only can I help them, you know, with my business, but I thought about it, though. I was like, you know, I want to help them with the root fear, the root cause, which is the income. Like, how can I help them get back to work? Right. How can I help them with that? If I can help them with that, like that will separate me from everybody else. Right. And I'll be able to make a real impact. You know. So I didn't really know how I was going to do that. I just knew I needed to, and I knew I didn't need to leave that room. I just needed to keep attending, and I kept coming. And I remember every time someone would land a job, they would tell their story, and they would get up, and they would say, you know, it was network. And it was so-and-so they met, they connected, da 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 this dot connected to that dot. It's not what you know, it's who you know, right? And I'm like, okay. Kind of a light bulb went off. I'm like, well, that's what I'm learning right now is networking. Like I'm becoming an expert at network. Like, okay, maybe I can help them with that. Mm -hmm. So that was the first kind of light bulb that went off. I was like, okay, I can help them network. So what I did is I went on to LinkedIn and I started to connect with recruiters online. And back in the day of LinkedIn, this is, this was back in the day where you could literally just go, Connect, 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 connect. And I don't advise people to do that now. Matter of fact, if you do that now, you'll get your account shut yep, down. Okay. Yep. But this is back in the day when you could do that. So I would type in recruiter wait, and I'm like, wait, give me a time frame of when this was. Uh, okay. Let's see. I got into, mm -hmm. this was probably 2017. Wow. Okay. So not that long ago. Yeah. 2017. Yeah. So back then, though, LinkedIn was basically just like, literally a, a job search type of a platform. Yeah. I mean, it started to shift a little bit. Right. But yeah, at that time, like, again, you could get away with a lot more than you could today. You kind of push the envelope on some things, some, some different types of practices. Yeah. <laughs> I, again, like I would not advise anyone to do this. I would not advise you to go click, 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 connect, 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 connect. No, no, no. I'm just um, saying that you'll get shut the, down. The purpose of, and I think the, the primary reason that people use LinkedIn now is a lot different than it was, you know, oh, six, seven years ago. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Ever since like Microsoft bought them, it changed a lot. And so I started connecting with these recruiters online and built a big network of recruiters. But then I would go after they would connect with me, I'd go reach out to them and send them a message and I'd say, Hey, you know, I got this group of job seekers I'm trying to help. You know, can we meet for coffee? Can we sit down and talk? Mm. Okay. And so I would meet for coffee and meet these recruiters and they loved it. All I was doing was just connecting dots, okay, connecting dots. People were getting jobs, you know, it was amazing. And then I got, I got recognized and was invited. Uh, this was in 2017, got invited to go onto a podcast. It was the first podcast I've ever been on and I got the bug. Okay. I went on this podcast and about a, about a, month or two later i had my podcast like you know and uh so that's where the who you know show got started because i remember thinking man we got to do this like how cool would that be essentially to do the same thing which is the who you know show we'll invite recruiters 
hiring managers, career coaches, anybody that can support job seekers, right? Because job seekers is the audience. I want to attract the job seekers. Well, I need to have resources. I need to have, I need to make these recruiters accessible, right? And I can just, again, the, we can use the, the show as an incubator for that. Because think about that. All these job seekers would have to do is reach out to the recruiter and say, hey, I heard you on the Who You Know show. Yeah. Instant door opener, yep. right? We had people, we did it on LinkedIn Live. Oh my gosh. I was a beta tester of LinkedIn Live. It, um, I was one of the first people, you know, in the country to get it. And I got LinkedIn Live and the show goes and it's like, boom, like when they did that, that beta, whenever your account would go live, literally notified it, it notified your entire network. Yeah. So boom, all of a sudden you had a giant audience on and we would tell people, we would tell the job seekers in the audience to put a hashtag what they were searching for. And then we had a recruiters in the audience too. They were in the, in the live comments. So the recruiters would then go look at them, right? Based off of if they said HR and, and the recruiters looking for an HR you know, position or whatever, they'd go look at them and they were connecting in the comments and people were landing jobs from the comment section of the live stream. It was crazy. That's amazing. That's so awesome. It was so cool. Yeah. Right. And anyway, so I've just kind of built and supported the job seeker community with all kinds of different things. And now I've got, you know, online training programs and this thing called the career transition summit that I've, uh, I teach them strategies on how to get out of the black hole, how to get noticed by employers and, and how to close the deal too. Cause it's important that we not only increase your interviews, but we get you to a point where you can close those interviews too. So you know, that's something I'm extremely passionate about is helping those folks, again, recover their cash flow, recover their income, at the same time helping them, you know, minimize some of that financial impact that they're going through with my financial services. So that's really what I do now. And that is from a kid that was at 13, was a felon. <laughs> no, I, I, that's, you know, this being a true crime podcast, I'm sure a lot of people are like going, what is going on? Why are we talking to this guy that's a recruiter, financial services? And, and the whole reason is because, frankly, I think your story is one of the best I've ever heard about, you know what, whatever crap you are miring in right now, it doesn't matter because you can always start climbing out of the hole. You know, staying, mm -hmm. and who was it that said, you know, if you, if you're broke, if you're born into poverty in the, in the United States, that is, that is not your choice. Staying there is your choice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, your, well, how, how you, how you proceed in life. It's like, nobody is held back. Nobody is actually, you know, this, this whole notion that you can't make it because of, you know, who your parents are or where you were born or mm. what race you are, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I, I hear stories like Les Brown, mm. you know, Les Brown was born, if I remember right, he was born with his twin brother, you know, during the, uh, shortly after World War II on the, on the floor of a, an abandoned warehouse. Mm -hmm. And yet you look at Les Brown now, and, you know, he's getting up in years, but he's kind of passed it on to his children. You know, he's, he's got a, just, he's massive. I mean, you know, yeah, that guy's amazing. co-authors books and oh, has yeah. this massive podcast. And, but the guy is like, you know, this motivational speaker for decades. Oh yeah. And I, a lot of it is because of the foundation of, of what he was when he was a kid, but he didn't, he mm -hmm. didn't let that hold him down. And more importantly, I mean, you, if you look at Les Brown or Ben Carson, you know, guys like this, that they were born in extreme poverty and yet they've become these massive figures. And, you know, if, if they can do it, anybody else can do it. And, and it's just a matter mm -hmm. of, of choice. And I, and that's, that's the whole reason I wanted to have you on is because you've made choices and mm. you, you've lived your life thus far with intention and you've, you've turned a, an absolute tragic story where you started into something that 
you're now on your way to becoming this massive success. And I, and I, uh, you know, I saw that you teamed up with, uh, Elena Cardone, you know, with, mm-hmm. uh, you know, talking about child trafficking and stuff like, and that's, that's another thing mm-hmm. that caught my eye about it. And, you know, that's something that being in the, in the true crime space and, you know, where I work with detectives that, are, that, you know, specialize in, in sex trafficking and, and sexual assaults and stuff like that. And it's, that's just a whole nother story that, you know, I think we may even be able to work together to, to help, you know, team up with some of that stuff. Yeah. I'd love to connect you with some of the resources that I'm, yeah. I'm connected with. You know, again, like I said, it, in my story, there's some sexual trauma in there as well. And like, again, I think there were like the back, back in the day, the AOL chat rooms and stuff like that, man, there was a lot of stuff going on and we had some stuff in my house, you know, yeah. and it's crazy to think about, but, yeah. um, Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. And like you said, thank goodness. I, I mean, I, I was, I was way too, way too much of a idiot kid that had smartphones been around, but I, I, I heard just, I think last week that one of the saying, you know, in smartphones, you're not just giving your kid access to the world. You're giving the world access to your kid. And that's so true. Oh my God. Yeah. And I just think mm. if the world actually had access to me when I was a kid, I, I, I wouldn't be here, you know? And mm. so it, it, that's another thing. It's just a whole new aspect that every parent has to fight with. And, you know, every, every bit of society, every, every person that is actually a contributor to, to society has to take that kind of stuff in mind because, you know, when you're, when you're talking about protecting children and, you know, helping kids get out of tough situations, you know, there's, there's a whole new dimension to it. And that is the, the cell phone and the internet and, you know, the access that they have to just, just bad stuff. Mm -hmm. And, but more importantly, the, the the bad people have access to them. And yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. When you get into that rabbit hole, it's, it's, it gets crazy. Yeah, Yeah. I definitely think that kind of back to what we were talking about before, which is, you know, the first step, if you're not where you want to be, the first step is really to make a decision. And like you have to plant the flag. I mean, you you know, you got to draw that line in the sand. Enough is enough. You know, like literally you have to be just so committed because it's going to take that commitment. You have to make that decision and and that's really the first step and and um again for me that decision wasn't made willingly. So I'm I'm actually grateful for that cuz I don't know if I would have done it to be honest with you. I don't know if I would have done it willingly. It wasn't like, I, I, I think back of my mindset as a kid, I, I, I wasn't ready to leave the lifestyle that I was living, mm-hmm. you know? And so I, I hadn't had enough is enough is enough, right? <laughs> like right. you have to kind of have enough is enough is enough to where it's like, I'm done and make that decision. And so luckily for me, that decision was made for mm-hmm. me. Right. And, and then the next step is change your environment. So first is make a decision and that next is change your environment. Right. You got to get away from the people you're connected with. And then it's the power of connections, the power of relationships. It's who do you want to be connected to? Yeah. Who, who is doing the things you want to be doing? Okay. So if you know, you don't want this in your life, whatever this is, what do you want? I need a target. And now who's doing those things, right? And uh, the easiest way to to get from A to Z when you're lost is to pull over and ask somebody who's been there for direction. Oh, yeah. Right? Well, and I, I'll, I'll take it even one step further. I Personally, I, I believe that the moment you make that decision, the people that will actually help you get to where mm-hmm. you want to go will start appearing in your life. Mm-hmm. But they are not... You'll see them. They are not going to come there until you actually make that decision and set that goal. So, yeah. What is that thing? There's actually a term for it. I can't remember the name of the term, 
Where like if you say I wanna, you know, I wanna buy a Ford F one fifty, a red Ford F one fifty, and then that's all of a sudden that's all you see. Yeah. Right? I don't know if you remember the term. I don't know. I, but there's actually a like a scientific I, term I, Yeah, for I know what you're talking about, but it's yeah, yeah. I can, it's one of the yeah, but, but setting a goal, man, that that just that's that it. kicks all sorts of it just crazy things where the universe just starts just ascending on yeah, you and you know it you start to see it it was always there yeah. like right. it, it's not like more ford f-150s just like popped out of nowhere no, no no they were always there but now you're you're focused on them right you see them now you're you're your subconscious is just looking for those opportunities and so if you don't know what you want you know it, it's going to be hard for you to you know oh, yeah. to land in there i mean it's going to be just a uh, luck if you land in something, you know what I mean? If you don't even know what you want. Yeah. Well, if you know what you want, you can make steps to get there. And you're right. I think the the universe, God will bring those things to you, you know, put the right people in place. And it's all about people. Like I'm going to tell you right now, as I look through my story and I was, I was writing my book. I'm like, it's people. It's people. It's all about who, you know, seriously, it's all these connected dots that you go, wow. Okay this person, this person, this person, right? It was my, it was my dad. It was the, the sales manager. It was the general manager who didn't like me, who caused me to jump ship, right? Like even the negative experiences, I'm grateful for that. Thank you for not opening that door for me, right? God had bigger plans for me, mm -hmm. you know, but it's the people through your story that, that, you know, help you to be who you're supposed to be. So, yeah. Well, I think it's important. It's all about who you know. Absolutely. Well, and that's, I, I think that's why your podcast is so appropriately named, man, who you know. So yeah, Trevor, man, we could go on forever, but I, I want to uh, end it here pretty quick to uh, let you get on with your day, man. I know you got other things to do. So, but yeah. Well, we got an eclipse coming soon. <laughs> oh yeah. Is that, uh, is that going to go over the top of you? Yeah, it's coming. I got to go. I got to hold on. I got to put my. Got your special glasses, glasses on. on? Oh, look at that, man. Yeah, that. you're all over it. I'm ready to go. Let's go. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I think it was last year we had an eclipse go over the top of us in the middle of one of my boys' football game. Like the oh, first yeah? half was, I think it was, it was right close to halftime. It was when it was, it, it, it wasn't ever 100%, but it was close. But yeah, it was. That's pretty cool. It was pretty wild. It was, it was hard to keep the boys. I don't think I've ever actually seen one. I think. There was one recently uh -huh. that I just didn't do. I, like, so I'm, I'm going to go out there and check it out. See what's oh, up. Oh, yeah. No, you got you to gotta go see it once. So listen, buddy, I appreciate it. And yeah, so tell me, um, how can people find your podcast? Yeah, they can just go to whoyouknow.show, uh, whoyouknow.show. Or you can go anywhere, you know, podcasts are. So Apple, Spotify, YouTube, you know, anywhere that you listen to podcasts, you'll find us, Who You Know Show. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah is Y A. Okay, we're in Texas. Who ya yeah, no, not who you know. But yeah, come connect with us. We'd we'd love to love to support you in any way we can. Yeah. So anybody out there that either yourself or somebody else needs uh, needs to be connected and um, get a better uh, get a better employment, better situation, then hook up with Trevor and you know this guy. I uh, love your story, man. I absolutely love your story because. There's so many folks nowadays that just don't know. They don't know what they don't know, number one. And number two, they um, they don't know how to get out of their situation. And, you know, most people, I think, that are anywhere remotely close to, you know, needing your services, I don't think are, are moving down the, the path of crime. But there's, there's always people that somebody, you know, you're one or two connections away from somebody famous i think you're also one or two connections away from somebody that uh really needs help so mm -hmm. you know you can you can absolutely be a, a a conduit to helping them get out of whatever the hole that, that they've dug and start making the best of their lives so that's what it's all well, about I appreciate that yeah a hundred percent that's one of the reasons why i started to write the book and uh, i was putting my story out there and people were just like oh my gosh when i was just putting little pieces of it out mm -hmm. and you know the the response i got back i was like okay i gotta do this yeah 
because it can help a lot of people, you know what I mean? And uh, there's a lot of people that had trauma in their life, a lot of people that have things going on. And so anyway, it can help. And so I'm uh, I'm grateful to be able to use use that for good, you know. Um, so, yeah, guys, connect with me and I'd love to help you in any way I can. Absolutely. All right, brother. Well, any um, any, any particular links and then send those to me and we'll we'll get them in the show notes and stuff. So awesome. Appreciate oh, you. Can't tell you. Thanks enough, man. This is absolutely awesome. So take care and uh, keep doing a good work, buddy. Thank you. Be good. Thanks for joining us. Your attention today brings us one step closer to exposing and eliminating the evil that brings crime to our communities. Hit subscribe and share this episode. Together, we will bring justice to every victim.